More than anything, it's company. It's yeah. having another heartbeat that's on your side. People laugh at me, like, oh, I say she's like my daughter. Then you've got people like him up there. His dog's got three legs, I don't know why. What can we learn about homelessness, about rescue and redemption, from relationships that people on the street have with their dogs? According to Andy Hutchinen, a lot. Let's go, Bailey, wait for Daddy. Why did you call Bailey, Bailey? The reason I called Bailey Bailey was because I actually bought him off the street off a beggar when he was uh, four weeks old. And the 12 pound that I gave for him, the beggar actually, who was a street drinker, went and bought a bottle of Baileys. So I thought that's quite upmarket for a street drinker. There's his name. <laughs> Andy and Bailey will serve as our guides on London streets. One man and his dog on one remarkably similar journey. And I'd been a heroin and crack addict for about 15 years, solidly, in and out of jail. I was laying on my uh, prison bed this this night on another sentence and I just I just thought I've had enough and uh, as I stepped out of Pentonville opposite the road there was two uh, two street beggars and they each had a puppy that was tiny still blind they were that young so I give them 12 pounds for him I took him to the vet the next day and the vet reckons he was four weeks old and they doped him up with Valium so he wouldn't cry for his mum so I've had him since then, I, I had to get him off the drugs. I had to get off the drugs, weaned him. I've had him since and I haven't touched the Class A drug since. First up, a free outreach session by the charity Street Vet. Stay still. There you go, so he gets a little orange eye. Andy is concerned by a cloudy patch in Bailey's eye. It's not really binding to that it cloudiness. Sharp, By day, Sam Joseph works in a private practice. By night, along with more and more vets across the country, volunteers on the streets. Why do you do this? You know, I can, you can tell from Andy and Bailey that their, their bond is incredibly strong between them. Uh, and I want to protect that bond, really. Is the relationship between homeless people and their pets any different from the relationship between people in houses and their pets? I think we see maybe a more um, complex relationship between homeless people and their dogs yeah, and maybe a more intense and profound relationship. Complex and intense. Jade Stat, another street vet, will do the introductions. To be honest, they are in really good health. You know, I have yeah. to be honest, and, yeah. and you know, I'm not just saying that. Like, would you say some of the owners look after their dogs better than themselves? I think Ian would probably say that he probably does that. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. My dog's name is Stark. I think Game of Thrones. For Ian, his dog is a friend, yes, but also a working dog, an enabler of his homelessness, providing security and income. Most people, 99% of people, to give me money is for the dog. What sort of relationship do you and Stark have? Just a good relationship. He keeps me warm and I look after him and keeps <laughs> the suit on my face like <laughs> Again and again, we heard stories of how, in the chaos of life out here, these animals serve as an anchor for people like Danica. She's like my daughter. I couldn't be without her. Yeah. It's when you're homeless and that. Oh, I'll give you a thousand pound to give you this uh, to buy your dog. And it's like, no, it's not for sale. So you've had people offering you, like, serious cash for yeah, Sky? Yeah, to take her. People that want to fight dogs. And they think I'm desperate for money, so... Well, you'd never sell them? No, and I don't think anybody would, really. Less than 10% of hostels in the UK accommodate dogs, mainly because of health and safety. So some people will stay on the street rather than be separated from them. In other words, this complex relationship can also sometimes be a barrier to people getting off the streets. For Andy, it was the opposite. He's now in temporary accommodation, and it was his relationship with Bailey that coaxed him off the edge. And once upon a time, quite literally. 
I've been out there alone. It's a very lonely place. I've contemplated suicide. I've even gone to the bridge. I was going to throw myself in, but it just looked too cold, you know? And then I had Bailey with me, and I was thinking, do I chuck, do I go in with him? And then it was, who am I to choose? We all only live once. Who am I to choose when his time's up? So then I'm thinking, I have to leave a note for someone. You know, and I couldn't find a pen and paper. And it, he just convinced me it wasn't right. That was, that was the lowest I've been. Yeah. And I ended up getting, I sat there for a couple of hours, just staring at him, and he just convinced me. Because there is communication there. It may not be words, but it's there. And yeah. like Bailey said to me, what are you doing, you fool? You know, come on, let's get out of here. Let's go get somewhere warm. And he, he, he turned me around again, again, to say he's a lifesaver. Truly is. I bet down across the road here in the in the, in the doorway there, yeah, in the, in the American candy doorway. Over two nights, stories of abandoned dogs rescued by people who know a thing or two about how that feels. How have you ended up living on the street? It's a long story. It's a long story. Yeah. yeah. Nobody else will be there. Then. Later, we swung by the American Candy Company again. Passers-by oblivious to Ian and Stark asleep under the blanket. Last word to Bailey's owner, Andy. But when you're stood there, hungry, and no one's noticing you, just walking by as if you don't count. But with him, it gives me a roll. It's having another heartbeat that's on your side. <laughs>